Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Last time we put up this long wire end fed antenna. This time we're going to go down in the shack and see how it performs. All right, we're down in the shack and I have the MFJ 12 volt injector here that's connected up. The coax on this side is RF DC out and that goes out to the antenna. And then the coax on this side is just RF in out and that goes to the radio. And then I've got a 12 volt power cord here that's just going to my 12 volt power supply, same one that's powering the radio. And we have an on off switch. So pretty straightforward. When the switch is in the off position, there's no 12 volts coming out, and the default for the antenna tuner is that it's just bypassed. So you can use the antenna with this turned off. You're just seeing the antenna as if you had connected directly to it with no tuner in between. And then if I flip the switch to the on position, the tuner is now active. Since I don't have any other control lines, this is just going to behave like an RF sensing tuner, so when I key the radio, it will tune. And it's as simple as that. Except for one small thing. The first time I came down here, which I don't have on video, I just wanted to do a quick check and I connected up this power injector, hooked up the radio, with this switched off, keyed the radio on, I don't remember what band, but one of the bands, and SWR was pretty high, as I expected. So then I set the radio to like 5 or 10 watts, and then keyed it up with just a carrier to get the antenna tuner to tune with this switch in the on position, and nothing happened. So I tried a couple other bands, tried a couple other things, nothing happened. The tuner just behaved like it wasn't there at all. So I disconnected this and I checked for power to make sure I had power coming out of the connector here on the RF on the power injector. I had 13 volts there. So then I went to the other end of this cable which goes to an antenna switch uh, at the other side of the shack here. Checked there had 13 volts there, went out to the tuner, disconnected the coax, and checked there, had 13 volts there. Now I'm beginning to panic, and I'm thinking, hmm, this tuner that I bought a couple of years ago may be just a dead tuner. And as I'm recording this, for those of you who may not be aware, MFJ announced earlier this year they were ceasing operations, and they're still selling out their stuff, but they're not making anything new, and I don't think they're servicing anything. So I thought I was just going to be out of luck. I brought the tuner in, opened it up, and apparently MFJ's auto tuners, basically all of them, are based on the same basic design. And this is a 926B, and in the picture here you can see that there's a main board and then there's a little small uh, sort of connector processor board. And they both say MFJ 939, 929 on them. So they're using the same components from those tuners, including the switches that are on the front of the desktop or shack mounted tuners. And one of the switches on there is the power switch. And the power switch was off inside the box. So I had to actually open the box up, discover that the power switch was off. I turned on the power switch, put everything back together, put it back outside, and it worked. So thank goodness for that. Now, let's get on to the performance of this antenna. Before seeing how well the tuner would do, I wanted to just check and see what the antenna looked like by itself straight into the radio. So I had the tuner in bypass, and I did an SWR sweep across the bands with the 7300's built-in SWR function. I really was expecting to just see the SWR be off the charts across all the bands, and it was in some of the bands. So on 80 meters, as you can see here, the SWR is more than three to one across the whole band. Then on 40 meters, same thing, well more than three to one across the whole band. And then on 17 meters, same thing, it's more than three to one across the whole band. And on 20 meters, more than three to one across the whole band. 
So those were kind of what I was expecting. I was a little surprised to find out that on 160 meters, the SWR was actually really good at the lower part of the band, you know, almost one to one, less than 1.5 to one. And then way up at the top of the band, it started to go up and it got up to about three to one, but not too bad at all. So I was pleasantly surprised with that. And then if we took a look at 30 meters, it's not great here, but it's less than three to one at least. So, and in this case, the internal tuner on the 7300 would be able to manage that. So again, better than I had thought. And then on 15 meters, again, not great, but not too bad. It's less than two to one at the lower part of the band and then only gets up to just under three to one at the top of the band. 12 meters was actually pretty good, less than two to one or just about two to one across the whole band. So again, usable by itself. And then on 10 meters, it's kind of a mixed bag. It goes up and down a little bit, but still not much more than two to one worst case across the whole band. So again, pretty good. And then the last one I checked, of course, as far as the 7300 can go, is I checked six meters. And on six meters, again, looked surprisingly good. You know, one to one on most of the band and just gets up to two to one in a couple of spots. So for just a random length long wire that I don't even really know what the random length is exactly, somewhere around 420, 430 feet in that range, but for just a random antenna, by itself, pretty good. I'm not going to show you charts for everything, but I will tell you that the tuner was able to tune the antenna to pretty much one-to-one -one or just barely above one-to-one -one across all of the bands. From 160 through six meters, when I engaged the tuner, it brought it right down to one-to-one -one wherever I was at. So in terms of usability with the radio, with the tuner, it's going to be fine. Now the big thing, how did it perform? Let's take a look at some of the contacts I made. On CQ 10 meters, EA7, Golf Alpha Kilo calling CQ. Whiskey America 2, Italy Victor Delta. Italy Victor Delta, you 5 and 6, 5 6 with me. A very good evening, Thomas. My name is Hub, Juliet Alpha Victor. Uh, microphone back to you, W Alpha 2, India Victor Delta, Echo Alpha 7, George Alpha Kimo. Over. EA7, George Alpha Kilo from Whiskey Alpha 2, Italy, Victor Delta. Thank you for the 5-7. And you are uh, between 5-7 uh, and 5-9 here into Kansas. Uh, very nice signal today. Looks like 10 meters is doing well. We're just trying out a new antenna here. Uh, we are calling you on a 130 meter long wire end fed antenna. Wow, that's uh, amazing. Uh, my God, uh, uh, big antenna, my friend. Uh, you are 5'7", solid audio. The audio is very solid, and I uh, hear you very well, very well. Just uh, five minutes to uh, 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, very dark, uh, I mean, very, very cloudy outside, and uh, we expect to have some rain, and we have some rain this morning. So, Thomas, uh, microphone to you for the final. Thank you very much for the short contact. Keep well and safe and enjoy 10 meters. Whiskey Alpha 2 India Victor Delta, Echo Alpha 7 Golf Alpha Kilo. Yeah, EA7 GAC from WA2 IVD. Thank you very much uh, for the contact. Uh, faded, you faded a little bit there down to about 5.2 or 5.3, but still very good audio, very good copy. Uh, and uh, weather here is about the same as yours. We had heavy rain this morning and cloudy now with more rain coming today. So must be the rain at both ends is making a very good conduit for 10 meters. 73, thank you for the contact. This is Whiskey Alpha 2, Italy, Victor Delta, clear. Thank you, and uh, you 5 and 9 in the last transmission. 5, 9, the last transmission. And my call is Echo Alpha 7, Germany, America, Kilo. Echo Alpha 7, George, Alpha, Kilo. 73, sir. 73. Ocean, Kilo 1, 2, radio, Zanze, 
Bar. Whiskey Alpha 2, Italy, Victor Delta. WH2 India, Victor Delta. Good afternoon. Okay, two hours that replying. Thanks for the call. You're five, <clears throat> five and seven. Fifty-seven. My name is Yiri. Japan, India, Romeo, India. Juliet, Italy, Romeo, Italy. Yiri, how copy? WH2 IVD. Okay, two radio Zulu. Yeah, OK2, Romeo Zulu, WA2IVD. Uh, good afternoon or good evening to you, Erie. It's a, a very good signal here, very good audio. You are uh, about, uh, I'll have to give you the signal report on my next, uh, on your next transmission. I didn't uh, watch it, but very good copy and very good audio here. We're trying out a new uh, antenna. I'm talking to you on a 130 meter long uh, end fed long wire antenna and uh, very good copy today. Uh, nice to hear from you too, Tom. Thank you very much for the info five by your long wire antenna. I have a um, four woman monobander uh, Yagi, four woman monobander Yagi, and uh, running a kilowatt. So thanks for the contact. And uh, just give me your report again. Uh, what, what was my report, Tom? Over. Yeah, your report here is uh, five eight to five nine. Very nice audio. Uh, five eight to five nine, and we're just running one hundred watts at this end. Just one hundred watts on an IC seventy three hundred. Yeah, real fine. So it's copy. Thank you very much for the contact again. Uh, best seven phrase to you and good acting. W A two I V D. Okay, to radio Zulu. Bye bye. Bye bye. Seventy three. Well, that's only contacts on 10 meters and 40 meters, but overall I'm pretty pleased with it, especially on 10 meters right now. Of course, there was a 10 meter opening, so that helped. I haven't yet really tried it on 160 or 80, other than listening. I'm hearing things pretty well on those bands and on the other bands also. 20 meters, I'm hearing a lot of stuff, seeing lots of signals. There's a sweepstakes this weekend, so I'm going to give it a try on there and just maybe give out a few points on some different bands, we'll see how good it does. And I haven't tried it with digital modes, but I have no reason to think that it's not going to work well with those two. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how well it performs. I think this is going to stay up for a while and maybe become my primary antenna for HF, at least for a little while. We'll see how it does in the wind. I'm probably going to have to do something a little bit stronger for the ropes pulling it up in the tree down at the bottom end, but we'll see how well it holds up. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you did like this video, I'd appreciate a click on that like button. And if you enjoy the channel, please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.